Hey everyone, uh, in this video we are going to talk about solving a system of equations so by graphing. Uh, we are working on IXL, it's you to solve a system of equations by graphing. So let's first talk about the meaning of solving an equation, solving a system of equations. So when we have an equation, each one of these two equations represents a line on the coordinate plane. And then uh, finding the solution to these two equations or to the system uh, is all about the point of intersections. If two lines cross each other at one point, then there's one solution. If they do not touch each other, like the lines on the graph, then there's no solution. If we end up with the same line for each equation, if they're on top of each other, then there is infinitely many solutions. So the graphing part is we, we learned how to graph a line. So now we are going to graph two lines at a time instead of just one. So uh, when you graph a line, one thing to make sure, if you're doing it by hand, is the equation should be in the form of slope-intercept form. If it's the slope-intercept form, which means if the y is all by itself, then you can graph it. You're good to go. All you have to do is find your starting point. So this right here for the first one, let's use the same colors or similar colors at least. So the first one is start from that point on the y-axis, that's the y-intercept. That's how slope-intercept form work. It's like y equals mx plus b. Start plotting from this y-intercept and that's why that slope. This is the slope, which is rise over run. And then this is your starting point, which is the y-intercept. Okay, on the y-axis, find that number. Over here, check that number out, it is negative six, right? Go to the y-axis, find that negative six. at negative 6 for the orange one. Now I need to do the slope, right? The slope is the number in front of x. What's that number in front of x? So the number that I'm seeing is there's one x, right? Just one x. You can always turn it into fraction by dividing it into dividing it by 1. So 1 is rise, the other one is also run. That means both numbers are positive rise one unit up and then go right one unit starting from that point okay go up one right one that's what it says and then plot that point so over here I'll go up one right one and plot that point that's it the IXL does the graphing does the graphing just for you okay once you have two points it draws a straight line passing through those two points that's it now let's go on to the blue one so Based on what we just talked about, the starting point for this line is positive 2. Find that point on the y-intercept and plot it. So over here, find that point, plot it for the blue line. Make sure to pick your line before you start plotting it. That's a mistake that I keep doing like almost every day. And then apply your slope to this blue point. Your slope right now is negative 1x. It's just negative 1, okay? But you can always turn it into fractions so that you can do your rise and run. Negative rise logically means go down one unit from that blue point, And then positive run is always about right. Negative run means go to left, okay? So right now we will go down 1, right 1 from the blue point. Down one, right one. Well, at the point, you will have your line automatically. Solve the system of equations by graphing. First graph the equations and then type the solution. So we will type our solution by scrolling down and figuring that point out. The coordinates of this point is over four on the x-axis. It's over four to the right x value is 4, y value of the point is negative 2. x comes first all the time, which is 4, and then 
the next number is y. Positive 4, negative 2. So let's just put those in. 4, negative 2, and then move on. Okay? Now, this one is in the slope intercept form. You have your starting points, positive 5 and positive 6. Your slopes are negative 3 over 1, down 3, right 1, down 4, right 1. And then they'll meet at a point that's going to be your solution. X comes first, then the Y number. Okay? So I will move up one level to see a question that is not in the point uh, slope intercept form. Okay, this is a great example. Let me do this. So, this right here is. Scroll down. Okay. So, let's do the orange one, okay? X equals positive 4. So, go to X and click positive 4. And then, what next? That's the only thing that we know about the, this line, right? X is always positive 4. So no matter what point we have on the line that I will end up with, X values should always be positive 4. If you have X equals 5, Y equals negative 2 sort of a thing, your line is either going to be vertical or horizontal. Now let's start with a horizontal line. Let's say this is my line, okay? Just pick two points and see if the x value is always 4. That's the easiest way to figure that out. Just make, take a guess. Let's say it's a horizontal line. Let's talk about this point. What is the x value of this point? The x value of this point is just 1. The x value of this point is negative 3. x of this is negative 7. But if the orange one is my line, this line would not be called x equals 4. Because x is not equal to 4 at any time. It's just for once, right here. At that point, yes, x equals to 1, but that's it. On any other points on this line, at any other points on this line, x is not equal to 4. So this cannot be my line. Let's just try the vertical, okay? Now we saw that this doesn't make sense. Now let's try. Let's remove this point by clicking on it again. Let's try to draw a vertical line. And let's talk about the points on this line, such as this point. Look, we go over 4 to get to this point. We go over 4. We go over 4 to get to this point. The coordinates are 4, negative 4, 4, positive 3, 4, positive 6. But look at the x values. They're always equal to 4. So this is my line. This is this should be the orange line. That's how we can figure it out. Or you can just type it on Desmos, see what it looks like, and plot it over here. But that kind of would be like cheating. Okay, now let's talk about the blue line. Y equals negative x. So the first thing is your starting point. What number do we have at the end of that equation? This is the slope intercept form because y is all by itself on one side. But there's no number in the end. It's like plus zero. That's your starting point. Okay? If you don't see a number, your number is zero. So that's my starting point. Now I need to do my slope. How many x do I have? What's the number in front of the x? There's a negative one x. But you can always divide it by a positive one to make it a fraction. The value is not going to change, but it'll become a fraction. That way, you can talk about your rise and run. Negative rise means go down. So start from the blue point, go down one unit, and then one positive one for the run tells you to go right. And that's it. Plot it. They'll be at positive four, negative four. So you come here, positive four, negative four would be my solution. There's only one solution because they touch each other at one point only. Now, this is going to be the last example for the video because the it's not in the slope intercept form. You need to get the y itself first and plot your point, do the slope, have your first line. So right here, let's work with the purple one. Over 
over here. That's the purple one. So if you subtract 2x from both sides, then we can have that y all by itself, right? Then the y is going to be all by itself. Let's just draw this line a little over. OK, so on the left, I'll have y. On the right, I'll have 2 and negative 2x. We usually start with the x term, so I'm going to do negative 2x and then a positive 2. That's my purple line. Now let's do the same thing with the green one. To get the y by itself over here, I need to subtract that x from both sides. And then I'll have the y on the left. X's are going to cross each other out. And then on the right side, I have a negative 1 minus x. So that's negative x minus 1. I will start with the x term. These are my equations now. It become, it, the, both equations become like the other, the other types. So for the purple, we have our starting point. Start from positive 2. Okay, what it? Positive 2. Or this line. And then do the slope. What does this guy tell me? Negative 2 is my slope divided by 1. So you see what your rise is what your run is. Go down to right one. So from the purple, go down to right one and plot it. For the green one, let's do something similar for the green one. That's my starting point. The y intercept. Start from that point, which is negative one. Again, click the green button. No, nope, negative 1 is right here. Okay. And then what I will do is I'll do the slope. That's just negative 1. And divided by 1, your rise is down 1, right 1 is your run. Down 1 from the green and right 1. They meet at one point. There's one solution to this system. That system solution is positive 3, negative 4. So this point right here, it goes up to 3. And then negative 4 on the y-axis. So that would be my solution to this one. So that's it for these questions and here is just one thing as you see it just shows you what your rise and run is going to be rise is negative one which means down one run is positive three which means right three it's already in the form of a fraction the number in front of x so you're good so for the first one all you have to do is get the y by itself. I'll show you what to do, then we are done. x minus y equals 3. So step 1, send the x to the other side by doing its opposite. So negative y equals, I have negative x and I have a positive 3. But y is not by itself, it is multiplied by negative 1. So you can cancel that out by dividing everything by negative 1. Divide that by negative 1, so these are going to be done. Divide this by negative 1 and divide that by negative 1. Now drop everything now. y equals negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. Positive 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. That would be my equation. Start from negative 3 to plot. Go up 1, right 1, and then the line is going to be something like this. Okay, and then the other one starts from negative 7, uh, starts from negative 7, right here, and then go down 1, right 3, and then it will be like this, something like that. They wouldn't meet right in the middle of a grid, they would meet on like a point of intersection. So it's my graphing skill. One, two, three. They would meet at this point. I see what point they would meet. 
right here. The solution would be negative 3, negative 6. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, you can always use Desmos to double check your work. It'll take like 3 seconds or so. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.